Hey, Mike here, michaelpitluck.com, and in this video, I want to show you how to set up a video views campaign in Facebook. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I'll tell you why I'm doing it. So I've made about five videos helping my specific audience. It's not in the make money space. My audience are uh, musicians. And so um, I, my main business is just helping musicians make better music, basically. And so I've made five videos that are uh, I'm going to show to my audience. And my question is, what is the best video? Okay, now here's why that question is important. Because for this video views campaign, or maybe you want to do this for your video views campaign, there's really two things. One is um, phase one of the campaign. I'm going to show all five videos. And I'm basically going to be running a contest which is the best video, which one gets the most engagement. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. And then once I know what the best video is, I'm going to basically turn off the other videos and let the best video run and just pour money, more money into that one. Okay, so two stages to this, find the best video and then let the best video run with more uh, budget behind it. Now, why would I want to do this anyway? And the whole point is really um, just to build up engagement, just to just to get people who don't know me. It's really just kind of awareness, just people who don't know me, just to know who I am. And the reason why there's two stages to it is because I want to find that video that gets me the lowest um, cost per view. Right. So if I have five videos running, one of them is going to do better than others. And the way that I know that one of them does better than others is because it costs more, costs less for people to watch it. And so, uh, and people like it better, right? So uh, that's the one I want to put money behind because uh, the more money I put into it, um, it's just going to cost less than the other videos plus people like that one. So it creates goodwill. And so that's pretty much it, all right? So that's why I'm creating a video views ad and campaign, you could say. And that may or may not be why you want to do it, but that's beside the point. How do we set the campaign up? All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just in uh, Facebook's back end. Um, if you don't know how to get there, just um, I'm sure you could just Google Facebook ad manager um, or if you get to the business manager, whatever. If you hit this little grid, you could just go to ads manager. All right. And uh, first thing we're going to do is create a campaign here. So we'll go ahead and hit create campaign. And then it's asking us to choose a campaign objective. Now I've already told you, and you're probably watching this video because we want to do a video views campaign. Okay. And so basically what this means is Facebook is going to optimize the campaign and put it in front of people by putting it in front of people that are more likely to watch the video. Right. So if I was doing any other campaign, Facebook would optimize for that objective. But in this case, I want people to watch the video. And so Facebook is going to show the video to people who are most likely to watch it because they just have all that day da that data on us, which I think is great. All right. So we'll just go ahead and do uh, video views here. That's all we got to do. And uh, what's next? Now, I remember when I first started running ads, every single box here scared me. I read everything, right? And you're going to see me kind of go this through this in a nonchalant way because, number one, I've, I've done it quite a bit now. Um, but number two, what I want you to take away from that is not to be intimidated, right? Don't be intimidated by running ads. If you think about it, it's very simple. You've got some pictures or a video. You've got some text. Um, and that is supposed to basically tell people what to do, right? What call to action do you have there? And then um, what do you need to do with the, the kind of – that ad is put it in front of the right people. So that's it. That's all you really got to do is you got to just know what audiences you're going after and you got to put the right ad in front of them. And so that's pretty much all the settings that we have to go through in the Facebook back end here. And so, like I said, I'm going to go through, through this casually because for me it's casual. And the only reason why I bring it up is because you might feel intimidated right now um, with Facebook stuff, but don't just relax. All right. So um, the new campaign here. Let's go ahead and name it. So what I'm going to name this is we're doing cold. It's a cold campaign, so we're reaching cold traffic. Um, the objective here is um, video views. And the specific campaign I'm going to be doing is for get better mixes, so GBM for me. And uh, for right now, we'll just leave it there. 
And so that just tells me what audience we're going after. We're going after cold. We're, what's the campaign objective, video views, and what's the specific campaign on my side, which is the Get Better Mixes campaign. All right. And so, again, the campaign objective is video views. We're not going to do an A-B test. We're not going to do campaign budget optimization. That's really important. All right. And the reason why this, you might not have any idea what this is, but what we we have a specific budget we're going to spend on ads, right? You might have a specific budget you're going to spend on ads. And so the question is, where are you going to spend that money? And so, uh, for example, I told you that I had five videos that I want to test out. And so what I want to do is I want to spend my budget evenly across those five videos. And so um, if I turn campaign budget on here, then Facebook is going to spend my money at the campaign level. And so what Facebook is going to do is look at those five videos and it's going to make a decision based on uh, data, which one is the best one. And it's going to it's going to put more money into that one. So in other words, if I turn campaign budget optimization on, then the ad spend, my budget, is not going to be evenly distributed across those five videos. And that's what I don't want. And so that's specifically why I'm not turning on campaign budget optimization. We're going to have to um, give Facebook a budget, but it's not going to be at the campaign level. It's going to be a level down, which is the next thing that we're going to. All right, so we have our campaign name. I have no idea what special ad categories are. That's probably some advanced stuff that we don't need or I don't need at this level just running a simple video views campaign. And um, cool. So uh, A-B test, we're not going to do that. And then a campaign budget optimization, CBO, is off. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And so we're at the campaign level. Now we're moving down to the ad set level. And the ad set level is a level basically where we choose the targeting, where we choose the audience. Remember, we have our ad, which is going to be the video, the picture that you choose, the image, and then you have the text, right? So that's the ad. And then, um, so we got to make sure that's right, but we also have to make sure we're showing it to the right people. And so at the ad set level, that's where we show, that's where we tell Facebook to show our ad to the right people. So we're, sh we're defining the audience before we get into the ad creation. All right. So obviously this video is for beginners. So if you already know how to run Facebook ads, this is probably really boring. So you don't have to watch this. Okay. So here and we're at the ad set uh, name and um, just trying to think. Normally what people do is they will um, name the ad set level based on the targeting. Okay. And so you go ahead and do that if you want to. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and call this the same as the, um, I'm going to actually call this the uh, video that we're going to uh, show. So the ad set name is going to be here uh, is the video that I'm going to show. So we'll just do, and I'm just going to call this video because I'm telling myself the ad set name is actually the name of the video, not the specific targeting. Because remember what I was saying at the ad set level right here, ad set level, we are uh, defining the audience. So it only makes sense to name the ad set level based on the audience you're actually going to be showing it to. But I'm not doing that. I'm doing it just based on uh, on the video, okay? So dynamic creative, I'll make a video on that later, but we're not doing that in this campaign. Dynamic creative is very cool. So here we're gonna set the daily budget. And so I, I wanna quickly find out what the best video is. And so I would um, do a high daily budget here. So we'll keep it at 20. We'll keep it at 20 there. Um, a start date, end date, I'm not going to set an end to this. What I'm going to do is just let the campaign run for a few days, check uh, back in a few days just to see what the video consumption is, which video is being watched the most. And um, so as I spend more money, it's going to become clearer and clearer, which is the best video. So I'm going to kind of leave this campaign open ended and I'm just going to end it when I can clearly see which video is performing the best. All right. So audience. Cool. So um, audience here is we're obviously going to go after the people that it makes sense to show the video to. Now, my audience is a specific um kind of musician. It's a musician that makes um, tech house music, or we'll just say it makes house music. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start targeting people that like or produce house music. 
I'm also going to target people who like specific people in my space, right? So celebrities, niche celebrities, celebrities in the space. I'm going to I'm going to target um, maybe magazine publications that they anything that my audience likes. Basically, I'm going to um, use that as a target. Now, I'm going to do set something up here. Whoops. Hopefully that's not too loud on the video, but I'm going to set something up here that's uh, beyond the scope of this video, a little bit more advanced. It's called a lookalike audience. So one of the things we can do in Facebook is create a custom audience. So for example, if you have uh, leads from your email service provider, you can export the leads. I actually have a video on this. You can export the leads and upload that customer list to Facebook and create a custom audience. And so that's great. So in Facebook now, you can retarget. You can you can show ads to that custom audience of leads that you have if you're promoting a, a new product or something. Another thing you could do is create what's called a lookalike audience based off of that seed custom audience. And so you could say, hey, Facebook, here's a custom audience that I just gave you. I want you to create a lookalike audience or I want you to create a new audience of people that look like these people. And Facebook has all this data on us, so it's able to kind of analyze the common traits or the common characteristics, you could say, of uh, or the common data points of this uh, audience that I gave them. And then it'll go and look for other people that kind of meet the same criteria, that have the same kind of data points. And that's awesome because you can take an audience that is maybe a thousand people that you upload to Facebook and you can create an audience that's like a million people or... 10 million people, usually closer to about one to 2 million people. All right. But that's a lookalike audience. So it's where you're able to take an existing audience and create a huge new audience based off of that. All right. So I'm just giving you the kind of overview of what that is. So what I want to do is I want to take the lookalike audience that I've created and I want to use them here uh, to help define the big audience I'm going to be going after. So um, what we're going to do is right here under audience, you could see this is where we're going to start defining the audience. So under custom audience, what I'm going to do is start is going to do LAL because LAL is kind of my little abbreviation, not mine, but you know, it's just a abbreviation of look alike. All right. So look alike. So I'm going to add all these look alike audiences here. You can see there's a number of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the, the screen recording and come back when I got them all in. All right. So I have added uh, my lookalike audiences here. Now what we could do, another great thing, is we can exclude people from seeing this ad. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exclude. So remember, this is a cold campaign. I want to show this video to people who have no idea who I am. All right. So I'm going to exclude anybody that does know who I am. <laughs> All right. You see how that makes sense? Because I, I'm, this is really just a cold outreach. I'm looking for people who don't know me to know me. Right. Um, and so what I need to do is exclude people that do know me. And so like I was just telling you before with custom audiences, you can upload these custom audiences to Facebook. And now what I could do is I could start excluding those custom audiences. And so, for example, I can exclude customers of mine. I can exclude leads of mine. I can exclude people that have engaged with my Facebook page. I can exclude people who have landed on my website. All right. And so that's what I'm going to do now. And what I've done is I have, of course, already created custom audiences of all these groups of people. And so that's obviously something for a different video. The most important thing for you to understand right now is that we are building the right audience. All right. And the right audience, the first thing for me was to define who do I want to see this? Well, I want to use all my lookalike audiences to tell Facebook, this is who I want to show my ad to. But now what I'm doing is I'm excluding people. I'm telling Facebook, hey, Facebook, but I don't want warm, the warm audiences, my warm audiences, i.e. people that know me to see this ad. Because again, this is a pure cold outreach ad. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this exclude button right here. And I'm going to start excluding my warm audiences, which are labeled warm. Okay. So there's a lot of these. 
And so what I'm going to do is start excluding these. I'm just going to go ahead and click one just so you can see how that seats. So there we go. Now I'm excluding a, a specific warm audience that I've created. That's beyond the scope of this video. The, the important thing is just to conceptually understand what's going on here. And again, I'm excluding people from this campaign that know who I am because this is a cold outreach campaign. This might be repetitive, but rep repetition is a good pedagogical tool. <laughs> That's fun. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and add all those warm audiences. So here we go. All right. So you can see I have excluded all these, uh, all the warm audiences. All right, so there's a lot of them. And so you would create those if you come over here and uh, go to audiences. That's where you would go to create these audiences. Okay, so let's keep going. So, so far what I've done is I've made use of the custom audiences and the lookalike audiences that I've created inside of Facebook to help me define who I want Facebook to show this ad to. All right. It's not complicated at the higher level. Yes, you will have to create these specific um, audiences, but it's not complicated right now. Okay. It's very simple. I'm just telling Facebook who I want to see this ad and who I don't want to see this ad. Cool. So that's where we can uh, mess around with the custom audiences. But the next thing we could do is start defining locations. So again, this is still the who. Who do I want to see this ad? And so now I can start narrowing in on countries or regions that I want to see this ad. And um, so right here with locations, people living in or recent living in or recently in this location, I'm going to just switch this to people living in this location. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after what's called the big four. And that's going to be the United States, uh, United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. I'm not going to target people in the EU because I don't want to deal with their, their regulations. Uh, so I'm and plus my biggest audience, my personal biggest audience is going to be in the US and the UK. All right. And so this is totally good for me. Um, if you are, um, whatever your audience is, wherever they are, that's where, this is where you want to do that, right? So if you're targeting people in Brazil, this is where you target them in Brazil. All right. So, uh, we're just going to go ahead and search locations now. So we're going to go to the United Kingdom and we're going to do, uh, Canada right here. And then finally, we're going to do Australia, just like that. All right. So now all these people, all these people from the lookalike audiences or anybody who's not from those four places from the big four, they're not going to see this ad. So again, we're just narrowing down the audience of who's going to see this. OK, awesome. So now we can get into some other demographic stuff. So age. So um, from uh, from doing this a while. Usually it's 18 to 44. That's going to be my biggest audience. Really, it's going to be 24 to 44. Um, and that's important because when you're 18 to 24, that age range, that's usually people who are in college are just starting to get out into the professional world. But after you're 24 to 44, those are professionals, right? Those are people who have jobs. Those are people who are trying to pay rent. Those are people who want to spend money or are starting to have money to, to um, spend on hobbies that they have or passions that they have. But I'm going to go ahead and just include the 18 year olds. Why not? All right. Um, so uh, genders, I'm just going to leave this open because uh, I'm dealing with uh, musicians. 95% of my audience is male, but hey, I don't want to uh, exclude any of the, the females or other genders that are uh, now out there. OK, so detailed targeting. So let's see. Um, this is now where we can target specific interests. All right. So we've gone through all the lookalikes or the custom audiences. We've excluded some custom audiences. We've now determined the location. We've dealt with age. We've dealt with uh, gender. Now we can start targeting interests. OK, so now what I'm going to do here is uh, start uh, putting in interests. So, for example, I'll start with a, a little celebrity, Chris Lake. OK, so. There you go. So now what um, now what Facebook is going to do is broaden now my uh, audience to include anybody that likes this guy right here, Chris Lake. And um, but it's going to exclude 
people from um, the warm list, which is exclude here, and is going to exclude anybody outside of these regions. It's going to exclude anybody outside of the, the uh, age range that we set here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go find tons and tons of these interests and just stack them up here because I want this just to be a huge uh, audience that I'm showing it to. All right. So I'll do another one. So let's, oh, here's, here's another tip. So right here, what I could hit is suggestions. And so now I can literally just start adding in um, interests that I recognize. And you can really go kind of crazy here. Um, so for example, let's find something else. So these are all kind of niche celebrities that I'm going after. Resident advisor. This is a kind of uh, just, I'm not even sure what to call this. Let's just call it a website. So this is a website that people could like. I'll go ahead and add that. And then we saw here's Mix Magazine. This is a magazine that people from uh, my area like. And so I'm just showing you different interests that we can add here. Let's see, here's a genre. I don't want to target that genre. This is the genre I'd want to target here. So this is a genre of music. So I'm just showing you that I'm throwing in lots of different categories of interest here. Niche celebrities, musical genres, magazines, websites, just chucking it all in here, trying to get uh, as much reach as I can while still trying to stay pretty narrow. All right, but I'll go ahead and finish up here. I'll pause the video and get as many interests as I want in here. All right, cool. So uh, I've added a ton of interest in here. Again, I'm trying to build just a huge but relevant audience, a huge, relevant, cold audience, right? So people who don't know me. All right. So um, let's see. Now, what another thing I could do here is exclude specific interests. Um, I can't really think of any interest that I need to exclude right now. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and ignore this one. But if you had... Um, if you had an interest you wanted to exclude, let me think of an example. I can really only, th I'm trying to think of an abstract example for you, but in my case, for example, um, you have different software that we use to make music, for example. There's uh, a software called Ableton and another software that you could use called Logic. And so um, when I'm teaching people how to make music, I have a preference on what software to use. My preference is Ableton. And so one thing I could do is exclude people that use Logic, right? Because I don't teach people how to make music on that platform. And so all these people that we've just defined, I can um, exclude people that use Logic. So just to show you what that would look like, I can go to Logic Pro and I can exclude Logic Pro. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that, okay? Um, but at the same time, I don't mind teaching people that use logic because they can still understand what's going on. And so that's why I'm just saying I don't think I need to do this. So I'll go ahead and take it away. But that's just an example of when or why you would want to exclude something with the detailed targeting here, exclude an interest. One last thing, detailed targeting expansion. I'm going to turn this on, okay? Because what Facebook is going to do is uh, I've, I've clearly defined everybody that I want to see this ad. I've, I've created lookalike audiences. I've, um, I've excluded warm audiences. I've set the demographic targeting. I've set the interest targeting. So this audience is very defined. Um, but one thing that I want to allow Facebook to do is use its AI, use its intelligence to go out and find people beyond the scope of my targeting. And uh, if they think that showing my ad to this people who are outside what I've defined will help the ad performance. So that's what um, detailed targeting expansion, they probably explain it better. Detailed targeting expansion lets you show your ads to more people, which may help you reach your optimization goal. So that's true, but it's not just more people. It's more people based on the seed audience that we're giving to Facebook and the seed audience and the defined audience. And so that's going to be everything that we've just done. So Facebook is going to take all the data points of the things that we've just given it. And the detailed targeting expansion is going to go look for people that are outside the scope of what we've defined and uh, possibly show uh, my ad to those people who are outside the scope of what I've defined um, if they think it will improve the ad performance. So um, that's, that's that. All right. So that's the audience we're going to show my ad to.
So now we're going to say, okay, well, that's the who, but where? Where are we going to show it to them? Obviously, people, Facebook has Facebook. They also have Instagram. And so what we'll do is I'm going to switch this from automatic placements to manual placements. And I'm going to turn everything but Facebook off. Now, the reason why I'm turning Instagram off, Instagram is a great uh, ad platform too. Um, probably maybe even better than Facebook at this point, but I don't know the data on that. But the reason why I'm turning Instagram off is because I'm going to do uh, videos that are longer than one uh, or two minutes. I forgot whether it's one or two minutes, but I'm going to do longer videos. The videos are about five minutes long. So I can't run those as ads on Instagram because Instagram has a limit on how long uh, a video ad can be. But Facebook does not. So I'm turning everything off but Facebook. I only want to display my video ads on Facebook. So next what we're going to do is get a little bit deeper here. This, these are specific placements uh, that we can target. And so the only place I want to show my uh, video ads are going to be in a Facebook news feed or in the Facebook video feed. And that's it. That's all. Everything else just doesn't seem to work as well. In stories, stories tend to be what? They tend to be shorter. And so it doesn't make sense for me to show a five-minute video as a story. I'm not even sure how that would work, to be honest. But I'm just showing you, just thinking about how this works. In-stream, um, search. Nah, I just want to show this to video feeds. That's just kind of standard. Um, it just works uh, the best, what I've found here. All right, so um, there we go. Manual placements. We're just showing video uh, in the news feed and in the video feed because those typically get the best results. If I had a video that was about a minute in length, then I would go ahead and turn on Instagram as well, and I would only do the Instagram feed, and maybe I would do Instagram Explore. But if I was being a little more conservative, I'd just do the Instagram uh, feed. I'd probably just do the Instagram feed. So that's it, all right? So um, that's it for the ad set level. The ad set level, again, is just defining the audience. So we defined who and we defined where, okay? And cool, so that is that. And we also define the budget, as it says right here. Okay, cool. So uh, we're doing 20 minutes a day to all these people with these demographic characteristics, with these interests, all right? And let's go ahead and end uh, people basically only on Facebook. Go ahead and hit next. So now the last piece of the puzzle is to uh, set up the ad creative, the ads. So I'm going to go ahead and... Who do F? And um, yeah, there we go. I don't need to put video there because this is the ad level. So I know it's going to be a video. So um, obviously, this is going to be uh, identity. This is going to be my uh, Facebook page. You need to have a Facebook page, of course, if you're going to run ads. If I was running uh, Instagram ads, I would just hit this and um, it's telling me I have to add. Instagram on the placements, which is where we just were, but I didn't. But if I had Instagram loaded, then I'd have to s select my Instagram account, ad setup. So there's different ways that we can run ads. We can create a new ad. We can use an existing post. So if you have a post on your Facebook feed that you want to run as an ad, uh, kind of like a boost post. So if you're on your Facebook feed, you could see that you could boost a post. Well, this is kind of like if you use existing posts, it's kind of like boost post, except you have all the advantage of the Facebook back end with the extremely detailed targeting and stuff. Um, and I have no idea what hub mockup is. Not a clue. So I'm just going to do creative ad because we're going to build this ad from scratch. Um, all right. Okay, so add creative. Not even sure what this is. So I'm just going to ignore it. Add creative. Told you I was going to be casual about it because, hey, I'm making an ad. Okay, so and again, just got to focus on, on the most important things. Who are we showing it to? Where are we showing it to them? And what are we showing them? So now we're dealing with what are we showing them? Add creative. All right, so now we got to choose media, right? Is it going to be a picture? Is it going to be a video? You already know this is going to be a video. And the campaign objective is what? Video views. So, of course, we're going to do a video. So I'm going to go ahead and add a video here. I'm going to choose this one right here because that's the video we're going to show. Um, this is asking me if I want to make it a square because a square is going to uh, take up more real estate on a, a screen. So uh, that's why I think they're asking that. But I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I don't want it to be um, a square. It just looks kind of awkward. And now what we're going to do is add in the, um, the text. All right. So remember, with an ad, you've got your image, you've got a video, and then you have text. That's all that really goes into an ad, right? You got your video and your text or your um, picture, and then you got the text. And so with the primary text, the primary text shows up right here above the video. 
All right, and so um, let's get out of there. And so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and get the. Actually, I think I have it ready to go. Yeah, here we go. So I'm just going to select this, and we're just going to dump that primary text in there. And um, so uh, while this is going to be a video view, I'm sorry, I'm going to add one layer of complexity here. And the complexity is that while it is a video view's objective, I'm going to in I'm going to add a call to action. I'm going to give uh, the few people, the very few people, that want to take a step further, to I'm going to give them the chance to take a step further. So I'm going to take them to a training that is ultimately um, a VSL. So it takes them to a, a landing page that has a video on it. The first half of the video uh, educates them. The second uh, half of the video now offers them a uh, discount on a product. All right, but let's check out the uh, let's check out the primary text here just to see how this is set up. So the most important thing is that hey, just watch this video, okay? That watch the video uh, ad, and so it says watch this quick video on the basics of underground house music production. Okay, very straightforward. <laughs> just telling them what to do, and then let me get rid of this. That's not supposed to be there, and then I transition into. Um, the call to action if they want to take that next step. By the way, if you want to get better mixes um, so you can start getting signed, go here. And then I just go a little bit more into what it is. All right. And uh, that's all. All right. I'm trying to make this as straightforward as possible because, again, I don't want to really distract from the overall campaign objective, which is just video views. If people are interested and they want to just go to check out the mixing training that I have here at this website, then I'm giving them that option. But still, my goal is to just figure out which of these uh, videos here is going to be the best video and then dump even more money behind that video uh, in phase two. All right. So this is just uh, so uh, let's zoom kind of back out now and just focus on where we are. We've uh, chose the media. So we chose the video that we're going to show. We've chose the primary text, and um, we need to also, um, and that's pretty much all we could do. But again, since I am including a call to action, I'm going to do add website URL, and let's go ahead and add the website URL, HTTPS, for getbettermixes.com. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to preview this real quick. Okay, I don't know what that's about, but that's okay. Um, let's just go to an incognito really quick. I've got to figure out what's going on there. That's not good. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> I wonder why that would be. So um, next, uh, that's probably an SSL thing, but I don't know. I got to figure out what's going on there. Um, next, what we're going to do is, uh, wow, that threw me off. So we're going to go uh, finish this up to do a headline. A headline here is going to be right under the getbettermixes.com. So I'm going to do free uh, class, um, which is going to say uh, free mixing class. Um, get better mixes so you can start getting signed just like that and what I'm going to do is actually so signed okay wow I mean I uh, well, the funny thing is I uh, was running a campaign recently and I wasn't getting a lot of leads. It was a video views campaign, just like I'm setting up here, but I wasn't getting a lot of leads. And that might be why. So I got to figure out what that was, but we're going to finish um, setting this up here. So that's the headline. Okay. So the primary text is what goes above the uh, image or the video. And then of course, here's the image of the video. And then here is the, um, the headline. Okay. And so description, I'm going to skip that. I think we only need a headline. The headline just says exactly what it is. It's a free mixing class. And uh, go here to learn how to get better mixes. All right. So display link. Um, the display link, um, I'm not going to do that because it's just going to be the exact same uh, link as the website URL. And you can see the website URL right here is um, displaying 
exactly what it needs. Man, I am really thrown off by that, but that is um, that is okay. We will keep going here, but that is the ad side. And then what we're going to do is go to website events. This is just going to be a little bit of a detail. Um, if you're running Facebook ads, you have to be using a pixel. And what you want to do is season your pixel. And you season your pixel by... Um, by by collecting data so as people interact with your ad you're collecting data and so we just need to make sure you select the right pixel if you're starting out you probably only have one pixel anyway but um, even on a video views campaign it's important to give that that um, that data to your pixel and so that's why I'm selecting um, this pixel so any kind of events that happen on the ad or off the ad this is going to um, um, collect that data and it's going to help season the pixel so the uh, Facebook uh, algorithm for my pixel gets smarter and what that means is as I'm spending $20 a day for example on this ad campaign then Facebook is going to get smarter and smarter and smarter in terms of who it, they're going to show the ad to and so um, that's why it's important to give that data feedback back to Facebook so they can make smarter decisions on who to show your ad to um, and that is really it. And so uh, let's just kind of go over it at the campaign level here. We uh, have the name, and that's pretty much it. We have the campaign objective, of course, which is video views. We're not using a CBO or campaign budget optimization. At the ad set level, um, we're setting the budget. We're also defining the audience. We're defining the who. So we've used lookalike audiences. We've excluded warm audiences. We've set the demographics. We have also included interest targeting, and I've also uh, turned on expanded targeting as well. We've also determined the placement of the ad. So not just who, but where are we going to show this ad? And in my case, we're just going to do uh, Facebook ads on the Facebook news feed and on the Facebook video feed. And then finally, on the ad level, we just need to create a new ad. Obviously, with the identity, we're just running it on Facebook because uh, it's a longer video, so Instagram won't play it anyway. And so uh, then we're doing um, create an ad. And with the ad creative, we found the video that we're going to use. We've determined our primary text. And uh, since I am doing a call to action, it's a kind of softer call to action. Then I've added the website URL because that's where people can go to on the call to action. And um, we've put in the link that they're going to go to. We've also added a headline. All right. Further enticing someone maybe to go to that um website and the call to action here i didn't mention this before but it, you have all these different things that you could do so you can go to watch more for example but uh learn more tends to do uh it's a nice site, uh, soft call to action and um and then with the tracking i'm just going to be tracking this for my uh specific pixel that i want to track it for and then we'll go ahead and hit publish and that is how you run a video views uh campaign uh, with uh, with a video view a campaign with a video views objective. Now there's one last thing. Like I said, I'm gonna be running a um, I'm gonna be running a contest on this ad. So what we could do next is I want to show you um, how to duplicate the ad. So I'm gonna do five of these, but uh, we're just gonna do one. So I've already created the the ad set for the first video. But now what we're going to do is duplicate this so we can get the second video going. All right. And so it makes it a lot easier to just simply duplicate the campaigns rather than having to rebuild everything from scratch. OK, I'm sorry, not duplicate the campaigns. But here what we're going to do is duplicate the ad sets. All right. So within one campaign here. So this guy. With this campaign here. Um, we're now going into the ad set level and we're going to duplicate the ad sets. All right. And so what does that mean? And so when we duplicate ad sets, what are we duplicating? We're, we're duplicating the who and the where, and we're also duplicating the ad too, but we're duplicating the, the, the who and the where, and that's exactly what I want to duplicate. The only thing I need to change after that is the ad itself. And so let's go ahead and go through that process. So we're going to duplicate the ad set here. And we're going to keep it as part of the original campaign. We're just going to do one copy for now. Um, and we'll go ahead and duplicate. So now what you can see, we've been taken into the ad set level. So this is the original one that we just set up. 
And then here is the new one, the copy. So I'm just going to call this uh, something else. Okay, because we're going to switch up the, uh, the ad. But the budget is going to stay the same. And the targeting is going to stay exactly the same. All right. And so I'm going to turn this on. Not sure why that was turned off. I'm just going to switch over to the other ad set really quick. Okay, good. That's turned on. So uh, just switching back really quick. Good. That is still turned on. Manual placements. So that's it, right? Real easy because I just want to duplicate that targeting because I want to show this uh, the second video to the exact same audience. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, that's good. Now we just need to change the ad. So we'll come down here to the ad. I'm just going to change this name here to synth, just like that. And now this is where we need to change the ad. This is the only thing we need to change. I'm going to keep the copy the exact same. I'm going to keep the call to action, the website, the exact same. The only thing I need to change as I'm duplicating these ad sets is the video itself. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and um, edit. Oh, let's go to change video. And we'll go to this one right here. And we'll hit cancel. And there you go. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. Okay. So that's publishing. Okay. So let's go back now to the ad set level. So now you can see we have two ad sets in here. We have the, uh, the WDF video and we have the synthetic video. But we know that the who and the where are exactly the same. The, the audience that we're showing them is exactly the same. Plus, where we're showing it to them is exactly the same. And so again, my objective here is to see which video does the best. And so it's very important that um, it's really important that um, everything is the same. The only variable, the only variable between all these ad sets in the campaign is at the ad level which is the the video itself but everything else is identical the targeting is identical um the copy is identical the only thing i want to change is the video and so that's what you just saw i duplicated out this ad set and then what we did is uh in this in, in this new ad set we kept the targeting the same we just went down to the ad level and changed the video all right and so what i would do is i'd go back and i'd do this three more times for the three other videos that I have. Okay, and so that's how I would set up this kind of campaign where I'm running a contest to see which is the best video. Then I'll see which one is the best video in a couple days, and then I'll pour more money into that. And so let me now show you the end result of a campaign that's based on this kind of structure. And so if we go to cold right here, this guy. So this is a campaign I just ran that I was just telling you about. And um, I'm still really thrown off by the fact that my website is saying that it's unsafe for some reason. Um, and that totally explains why I wasn't getting actually leads from this specific campaign, which was really troubling because I spent uh, quite a bit of money. Anyway, but let me show you how to judge how your uh, video campaign is doing here. And so you can see that in this campaign, I had five videos. And I've turned four of them off because this video right here was the best video. So after I ran this for about four days or so, or three or four days, I came back and I saw this is the best video. So I'm going to turn these other videos off. And so now this video right here is the one that is being shown to the cold traffic. All right. And um, because it has the best cost per, per uh, consumption. So how do we um, measure which is the best video? So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to columns and we're going to go to video engagement. And as we scroll over here, what we're looking at is simply the video, uh, the, um, the plays. Now you can see that the amount spent is all roughly the same. It's all about uh, around 140. And so uh, that's why it's really important to duplicate these campaigns and have everything else the same, the same starting date, the same budget, because you want the amount spent to be roughly the same. And so what I could do is just organize these, the video views here based on, um, 
based on 100% consumption, you can see that this video up here at the top had the most views per ad spend. So this one had 351 completed views, and this is a 12 minute video. Uh, uh, yeah, so 350 completed views, 100% views, uh, and I spent about $140. Whereas this one down here had 142, so uh, less than half of the uh, the amount, and I spent roughly the same. And so obviously, uh, that's how you judge it. So this one had the best, and so this is the video that I'm going to continue to run on the cold traffic so that people get to know me. This has the lowest cost per view, and it's also, therefore, the video that people like the best. And so when I'm showing videos to uh, people that actually help them, that they find them interesting, they find them engaging, that's just going to create goodwill for the brand. And um, that's that's exactly what I'm looking to do with this campaign. Okay, but that was setting the campaign up. And then this last uh, couple minutes here was just looking at how to evaluate that campaign. And it's just based on video consumption, 100% views. All right. But um, that's all I got. I hope this was really helpful. It was a very long video, 45 minutes. I am 100% right now going to go figure out what's going on with um, that website, why, why it's not working. But if you have any questions on what we've done in this video, setting up the video views campaign, the ad set level, the ad level itself, uh, and then also measuring the performance uh, of your campaign, then leave a question down in the comments below. Uh, I look forward to your questions. Thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. All right. Peace.